Can you talk to us about far red light, specifically between 700 and 750 nanometers? What does it do to the plant? And then also, is it worth supplementing far red light or do most grow lights have enough far red that it's not worth supplementing? Well, it's uh, this is something that uh, this is like the something I've, I've been hearing about for 10 years. But once again, still is ever evolving. It's it's uh, it's funny. We had a, we recorded an episode of the Jug Dealers podcast the other day and uh I happen to know. Once again, I, I've been in the world. I've watched certain people use far red to effective results for the most part. And then I'm talking with these guys here, the Darren and Gabe, two of my most like respected grow brains in all the thing. And they both look me in the eye and they're like, you're wrong. And I go, bro. Well, I was like, I thought they were going to be, yeah, of course, the flower initiation, that stuff works. And they're like, no, doesn't do anything. Doesn't exist in nature. I'm like, what? Oh, so this controversy, you know, this goes deep. Like this is one of the, those controversial things. There's the, there's the red and there's the UV we'll get to. I find that to be not since organic versus synthetic. Have we had as much debate <laughs> in the growing community? <laughs> and so as far as the far red, some people can be confused right off the bat. So we should probably clarify that. Uh, I mentioned the red earlier as, as the IR, the infrared. And so when, uh, as Gro mentioned, the, the PAR, when you see a, a PAR chart, it's what does a plant see? It, think of it like the visual spectrum of a human, right? We don't see x-rays and gamma rays. We don't see microwaves and radio waves, but we see visible light. Same sort of thing with the plant. It's got a visual spectrum that it can see, but just the same way as x-rays sure as hell affect us if we're bombarded with them. Same thing. Things outside of the PAR range also affect the plant. And so uh, infrared is outside of that PAR range way outside of it and so it, it's uh, like i said that's why it's interesting it's like oh it's outside of par yet it still does affect the metabolism of the plant there's the, also that's infrared now we're discussing far red so that is slightly on the end it's just dipping over the side of the par range a little bit in a little bit out and it ha does quite a bit of sort of stuff uh, it's a lot of negative stuff as well as positive. One of the main things that uh, I think as I can speak is, you know, there's there's not a ton of science science out there as as far as this stuff. Once again, it's a lot of the companies and I trust a lot of the companies. Shane from MyGro, I trust this guy. You know, I, I there's certain characters out there. Uh, Jair from the Dutch Lighting Innovations, I trust him. So when these guys say things, I listen. And so... We can start with uh, the negative sort of effects that the far red will have. So far red is uh, just like if you can think like the reason the x-rays are so powerful is they're a really small wave. They're very intense. It takes a lot of energy. Like if I want to make something like jiggle fast, I got to put a lot of energy with it. And so versus a radio wave, right? It's this giant, huge thing. It can wrap over your house and still get a signal on the next one. Whereas if I shot, you know, an x-ray burst, at your house, it's going to hit the wall. It can't go over. It's too small of a wavelength. And so you can think of the, the, uh, the far red kind of like that. It's a bigger thing. So it can get past your canopy. It can get past your leaves. It can get down lower. So if you have a forest and you've got a bunch of trees that are shading out a plant, a little plant that's trying to grow down there, our, our little favorite high valued plants that we like to grow. If we put that underneath a giant forest canopy, right? It's not going to get any of that, that delicious par that we're talking about. But what it is going to get is some of that far red because it can get through the canopy and it still hit it. And what that tells the plant is stretch, baby, stretch. You're not getting any of the yummy light that we need to grow. We're getting all that red light. And that means that there's light above us, but we ain't getting it. So we got to grow up there. So one of the things that I've seen a lot is people that will uh, use uh, their far red lights all cycle is that they're getting a lot of stretch. Now, some people like the stretch. This is an interesting thing of uh, at the the five eight jug dealers guys. We like to say it's it's like think of uh, like a bloom booster, right? Is like an additive, right? It's not it's not required. It's just it's going to get you farther. I think of like the these UV the, the 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 far red things like that. That these are the the additives that we're adding in some genetics. Need more cow mag. That's where it came from. Some need less. Some need so same thing. Some genetics, some cultivars, as we're now calling them, they uh, or should probably should have always been calling them. Strains are for mushrooms and and flus. Cultivars are for plants. Just to <laughs> clear up any, uh, we still call it strains. We can still say it. No one's don't don't be a snickerpuss. Don't don't 
talk down to someone because they say strain. We get it, cultivar, <laughs> you know. But some of these cultivars, they uh, they, they need more than others. And so, uh, if you got like these little tiny squat plants that you want to grow up, maybe you you have techniques for increasing that that internodal spacing. One of the things, the reasons we don't like stretching is because it takes node to node of those uh, those flower sites and increases it, and then you get these giant top heavy things that want to bend and break and you're having to give them more silica. So that way they have a little bit more elasticity to them and everything just gets changed. So if you're one of these like high level thinking growers, like my buddy from threes genetics, uh, JLS monster, he's one of, one of the best breeders in Colorado. And he was like, I like, I run my far red mid cycle. I, I like a little stretch. Like he'll grow these, this kernel chem that I love. I love I got some of it sitting over here and man, amazing he's like it's too squat the nodes are two together i will i sometimes i get bud mold okay i would have never thought like okay maybe this guy wants stretch because he's, he's getting botrytis <laughs> at the end of his harvest he's like this loosens up some of those tight flower sites and those, okay i'm learning holy crap here's another thing i would have been like that's bad i could say that's bad don't stretching is bad is it not if that's exactly what you want to keep your plants that you, keep you happy and healthy, happy and healthy. So uh, on the positive side of it is the flower initiation. This one, my friends have legit been doing forever. You can think of it just like I talked about with how red are these big giant things. Well, before our eyes can actually see the sunrise, we're actually starting to get bombarded. That's why it starts to heat up. A little bit before the sun even comes up. We're getting hit with that IR first. It's the biggest. It's coming down. It's cooking up our atmosphere. And then that far red is coming in. And so even though the sun hasn't crested the horizon yet, it's still throwing some of that far red that our eyes can't necessarily even see, but the plants can. And that tells them to wake up. Same conversely, when the sun starts to go down, it crosses the horizon and then all that visible light is blocked by the horizon. Yet some of that red is still so big, just like the x-rays hitting your house versus the radio hitting your house. You can hit the radio in a big city, even though it's blocked, it, it your plant sees, oh, there's that outgoing red time to go to sleep. So people have called this the flower initiator. You'll run it for 15 minutes before your lights turn on and 15 minutes after your lights turn on. This tells them that it is fully time to wake up and fully time to go to bed. And they will go, it takes your plants, you know, an hour to so. I, I Once again, cultivar specific. Some, some plants go to sleep very, very fast and some other take forever. Just like people, it's almost like life is like life. You know, they're so much like us. It's, it's almost spooky. And so it will tell them, wake up, go to bed and they go faster. And then, so they're, they're able to produce sugars and oxins at night and, and interchange with the roots, the, the roots and the, the shoots, as we call them, they both are doing different roles. One's creating oxygen. People always think that the plants, well, they create CO2. Well, did you know the roots create oxygen? That's why terrariums can exist. Blew my mind when I started learning. You can put a plant in a sealed bottle and it will live because its roots are producing oxygen and it's uh, the flowers are producing CO2 and it can circulate through the two. Blew my mind. And so if you start shortening those days or get, not shortening your days, but getting them to go to sleep faster, you're actually day after day in a, you know, a 60 to 80 day flower cycle, you're actually pulling several days off. Some people are saying I'm pulling a week off of my plants. This is the point I try to make with Jaron and Gabe on the Jug Dealer show is where they're like, no, it doesn't do anything. And I was like, I think we're talking quality. I don't think it does anything to increase quality. You're not going to get more oil and those VOCs from this, but you're taking time off of your schedule. So it, it, it's more, I guess this could be lumped into the yield category because if you can jam another harvest in your garden each year, even if you're losing a little bit of weight run to run, you're gaining that weight back plus by jamming a whole extra harvest in there. And I think that's something we all can get down with. Got it. Yeah. So there are definitely pros and cons. And it sounds like that con that you mentioned is really subjective, right? Actually, I had uh, somebody on the podcast pretty recently, uh, Dave Baker, shout out to him. He was on there talking about auto flowers. And one thing that was pretty interesting is he actually uses the far red for auto flowers because he wants that stretch. He wants that Ooh. veg growth uh, to happen. You know, he wants the biggest plant as he possibly get sure. in an autoflower. Obviously, we all know that it's limited 
on its time frame for veg, it automatically flips to flower, right? So that veg time frame is super, super important. If there's any stunt growth, you could have a significantly smaller plant. So he utilizes far red, supplements far red in order to get a bigger stretch on his autoflowers before they actually flower. I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. And this is what learning looks like. People go, people ask questions like, how do you know that? And I go, because someone smart told me it once and I listened. <laughs> Auto flowers. That's fascinating because exactly like I talked about, like getting bud rot and stuff. That's usually an outside, uh, outdoor sort of thing, you know, but a lot of people do get it indoors. And I could totally see you get that, that giant Christmas tree. You can't really top an auto flower the way we would top a, a normal photoperiodic plant. So you get this giant Christmas tree cola going up. I could see totally increasing that internodal length gives you more room for those buds to grow, tells them there's more space for them. This makes sense to me. Absolutely. So would you say it's worth adding in like for people to actually go out and buy the lights to supplement, or is it just kind of like an, a plant additive where you can get it, but it's kind of like an optional thing and it'll take you a little bit further, but it might not be worth it for some. So you can type into Google, Google image search at some point after this podcast, everyone listening, just type uh, law of the minimums chart or graphic, the law of the minimums, right? So if you take a barrel and it's all got level sides, right? You can fill the water up to that level of the barrel. Now you take one plank of that barrel and you hammer it down five inches, right? Well, the height of what that barrel can contain is now its lowest point, right? That's just what it did. The water is going to flow out that hole until it reaches to that equilibrium point of that, that lowest plank. And that's your new water level. You pull that plank up. Now you can fill it all the way back up. And it's, it's a, a great chart. I think it's Lee Biggs law of the minimum. I can never remember exactly the, the fellow's name. I, I, I learned from college educated people yet was not college educated. So I have a hard time retaining some of the, it's, it's a knowledge fire hose out there these days grow. It, it's hard to maintain all this stuff, you know? So yeah, look up law of the minimums. And, uh, I would say for sure, we will say this even about something as pedantic as CO2. Don't worry about it until everything else is dialed in. If you're not hitting your DLI, your preferred PPFD, you're not even going to be able to, uh, like you're going to get, that's another thing about giving it more light. It's, it's this weird cause and effect loop, right? Don't worry about having CO2 if you don't have enough light. And then don't worry about putting more light in if you don't have CO2. It's like a weird, all all apes are monkeys or all monkeys are apes, but not all apes are monkeys sort of thing. It like, depending on what you're doing is, so I would say for sure, just a short answer to the question is, yeah, it should be one of the last things you're worrying about. But if you have your room dialed in and you're like, I don't know how I could possibly make it any better. Yes. Now we're talking. You're the person that should be kind of thinking about that. But if you're a new grower, you're buying your first tent. You're like, should I buy some far red? No. Your, your light will contain enough to be perfectly adequate. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.